the question may i request you to kindly make the question brief and to the point and restrict it to the issue because of the limited time available with you. and to whom the question is if it's to dr zakir naik advocate majid meman or mr mahesh bhat kindly specify and kindly state your name and which media organization you represent so they can give you a more appropriate response yes brother yes brother the mohammed wajihuddin from the times of india okay you have welcome I, you have already identified me so i don't need to this time okay dr uh, zakir naik you are very uh, Uh, beautifully clarified the context in in which you said you talked about the Muslims being terrorists. Now you were talking about a police officer who was a terror to the uh, the those anti-social elements. Now do you think that now you could have rephrased the those terms when you said that every Muslim should be terrorist? Because this is this is not the first time. It has been on the blog. It has been on the internet. It has been on the television. On the in in various articles. now the the second question is do you think that by banning you your entry to the united kingdom as the indian express uh, editorial pointed out yesterday perhaps they have given you a big megaphone to tell the world that oh here i am and i have been victimized thank you very much this is taking part of the question about, about your ban on on uh, the uk visa revo uh, you know revoking your visa so perhaps they they have given you a big platform to tell the world the you know use the media and tell the world like it is like this press conference to go to the world then now i am being victimized another muslim is being victimized okay so why you didn't ask two questions the first one that thing the context should i say in the context of a police man that he is a terrorist in criminal should i use it for the muslims using it only by itself is wrong therefore though i have used it many times i always go ahead to say that i am aware that a terrorist more commonly is used for a person to terrorize a innocent human being in this context no muslim should ever be a terrorist if i say along with it no problem but if i only use this without mentioning that terrorist is more commonly used for a person to terrorize a innocent human being it is wrong so therefore whenever i mention this i say it in context and as far as the second question is concerned that uh, do i agree with the news of the indian express that the uk government has موسیقی having people like mr mahesh bad and uh, no no i need in addition to that you have been on okay for my yeah. views i'm giving you may agree with my view or disagree with me you don't agree with my view you are asking my view so in that way what they have done they have made one of the biggest mistakes and what i would get majid meman said that any lawyer even a layman if he reads this he knows that it will not stand any chances and whatever he said he just heard in the morning same way i would advise that we are we are looking for the time when we have the case challenge in the uh, uk high court we are looking for it okay and now you know now why, why don't you leave it to allah only and you know instead of fighting for your entry to uh, united kingdom because united kingdom as far as i know that is not a place that every muslim must visit it's not like mecca or medina that you have to visit at least once in a lifetime another thing is that this is a prerogative this is a prerogative of the country country to allow a person not to allow him so why you are challenging that you, why don't you just sit and say okay we just wait again there are two questions asked by the muhammad wajid din first question why do you leave it to allah alone why do you want to enter allah our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when a person asked him i have a camel camel should i trust in allah and leave my camel or should i tie my camel and trust in allah so the prophet replied tie your camel and trust in allah so i am following the commandments of my prophet trust in allah but i can that doesn't mean that if i'm sick as i believe in allah i won't go to a doctor because quran says fast alu ahli zikri in kum tu la talam surah nahl chapter 6 number 43 if you don't know as the person is an expert so in the law the law is expert so not that if uk bans me there is that i will not be able to speak but come to your second question 
that they have a prerogative to allow me or not to allow me, I agree with you. They have a right to allow or disallow any human being who is a non-UK to enter. But giving me permission in 2008, I have been going since the past 15 years. I have given several lectures in most of the major cities of UK, in London, in Birmingham, in Bradford, in Cardiff, in Glasgow, in Manchester, and tens of thousands of people attending. Even after giving me a valid visa, last visa that they gave me was 2008, valid for five years, it yet has three years validity. To exclude that, it is against the human rights. And I have a right to enter, and that also maligning me. One is preventing me from entering one thing. That one thing which is which is not that much of a problem for me. Without going to UK, I can go in many other ways, I can have my voice free. But maligning me, saying that I am a person who is a hate monger, I am a person who promotes terrorism, that is a bigger issue for me than entering UK. And hopefully we will reverse both. And it is the right of the citizens of UK to hear me. It is the right of the citizens of UK in tens of thousands who want to hear me. Why are you depriving them of hearing me live? When they have had one of the best arenas, one of the biggest arenas they have had in UK and they don't want to hear me, it is their right that they have to hear me. That is the reason I feel that all of you. Any other question? We will give chance only one or two questions to every newspaper, yes. otherwise at the limit given to me for time will not be able to be managed. Um, yes, sister. Things on between two Can we have your name and the newspaper you represent? Uh, yeah, I'm Arif. Between 2008 and uh, till now, uh, how many times have you visited the UK? And also, uh, the YouTube video was attributed to 2006, but you're saying it was in 1996, five years before 9/11. But uh, in 1996, you were aware and you were talking uh, about Osama bin Laden and his activities. That's a true question. But how, many, how many? Yeah, I mean, I don't know uh, how many activities in 1996. Between since I got the visa 2008 and how many times I have travelled, I have travelled twice. Once in 2008 and once in 2009. And a couple of days back I was supposed to travel the third time. As far as the second question is concerned, was I aware about Osama bin Laden in 1996? Believe me, not as much as I am aware now. The name had just appeared. And I have told it, it, it. A Muslim should not malign anyone without because the Quran says in Surah Jiraj chapter 49 verse number 6 whenever you get a information check it up before passing on third person so when a Muslim condemns I said you cannot condemn anyone without proof that means I said I don't know him I don't know whether he's responsible I don't say he's good or whether he's bad but naturally I did not know him much now also I don't know him much but the media has given me information which again whether right or wrong is to be discussed later on. But you, I do agree with you that it was 1996, so you cannot attribute this statement of mine to the 9-11, which took place five years back. All the extracts are pre-July 2008. Uh, the next question from the sister. Yes. Uh, my name is Kavita. I'm with the Indian Express. My question is to Dr. Dr. Nayak. There was a group of uh, Muslims who went to the Deputy uh, High Commission yesterday. They were led by the Raza Academy and they supported the decision to exclude you. What would you say to that? Every person who is popular, who is famous, has some people against him. And the best example of beloved Prophet Muhammad not only according to Muslim, even according to non-Muslim Michael H. Hart, Prophet Muhammad is the most influential history, he is the most influential human being in history according to Michael H. Hart. He wrote a book on 100 most influential people in the world and number one he rated Prophet Muhammad But today, the maximum books written against any human being in the world, it is Prophet Muhammad So similarly, because of my popularity, everyone may not agree with my view. That, so the, there are people who may disagree and they have a right to disagree. I'm not saying everyone should agree with my view. Uh, any question from anyone in the back? Nikrataya? Yes, brother. Anyone? There? You have a mic at the back? Uh, in the front here, there was. You can allow the brother here in the front. Say your name and. Uh, Akshay Reshmani from DNA. Uh, hi. Uh, I've been reading uh, the British press now. <laughs> so uh, I don't know how, how much of this information that I'm putting through is true, but then 
uh, based on that, I think it was the Times which reported this Times London or some some such paper. Uh, they, what the, the newspaper report argued was that uh, your views on um, controversial personalities like Salman Rushdie and uh, uh, the author of Lajja uh, uh, being uh, Taslim Anasi. Now, uh, your views on them have been, uh, uh, you know, quite unpopular in the.